In this tutorial, you'll learn how to cite three kinds of resources for the AP Computer Science Principles Create Task. To learn about this Create Task plagiarism policy and more about when to cite resources, check out resource number four in the video description. First, you'll learn how to cite program code. Second, you'll learn about citing graphics and sound resources. Finally, you'll learn about citing data sets and tables. This example uses AppLab JavaScript from code.org. However, if you're using another programming language, it will be more or less the same. We'll start by learning about citing program code. So when do you need to cite program code in the create task? First, you must cite it when the code was written by someone other than you and your collaborative partner. This includes code that another person or a generative AI such as ChatGPT wrote. Even if you modify someone else's code, you still need to cite it because the original code was somebody else's work. To learn more about the ins and outs of generative AI use, check out resource number four. Second, you must cite when using your own code if it was written before the create task began and you received instructions, feedback, or support from your teacher or another person. This may happen if you want to reuse code from a class project you made earlier in the year. An important thing to remember is that you are permitted to use cited code in component A, full program code. However, when you take selections of your program code and put them in component C, personalized project reference, those selections should be original work made by you and your partner during project time. Now, let's look at some code and learn how to cite it properly. The College Board uses a generic term procedure. However, for the App Lab JavaScript code I'm using, it would be more correct to refer to them as functions. We'll start with the first piece of functionality in this program. I press run and the top text box tells me, enter your list of numbers separated by a space and without commas. I enter some numbers, then I press the sort button. The program outputs the numbers in a sorted list. Let's look at the code that the button triggered. We have an event listener for the button. It sets the output text to blank. Then it gets the numbers out of the top text box, splits them into individual numbers, and stores them as a list in the global variable to be sorted. Then we call a bubble sort procedure. The code for this bubble sort procedure is heavily based on the code we see on this website. If you compare them side by side, you'll see some changes. However, it's still more or less the same algorithm, so I will cite it. Let's look at the top of the web page. Bubble sort algorithm using JavaScript. We don't have the name of who wrote it, but we have a web address. So we take this web address and go back to our program. We'll show where we started and where we ended the code we're citing. I'll open the toolbox and select functions. Next, I will take a comment block and put it right before we start the bubble sort procedure. A comment is a note we leave to other programmers. It won't affect how the program runs, but it'll provide important information to other programmers. I type citing bubble sort and then paste in the web address. If I had an author, I'd include that too. Now I've got to indicate where the cited code ends because not everything from here onto the bottom is cited code. So I take another comment, put it here, and say end cited code. Let's switch over to text mode. To create a comment, use two slashes, and everything after that on the line will be a comment. We'll go back to block. So now it's clear this wasn't my original work, and it's fine to turn in this program with cited code. However, since this code is based on somebody else's code, I don't want to use this for my code selection in component C, personalized project reference. Next, let's learn how to cite a graphic or sound resource. For most students, the images and sounds you use in your project won't be your original work. That's fine as long as you cite them. Let's take a look at the images we're going to be citing. We click the walk button. We have an animated character that walks across the screen. When it gets to the end, it turns around and walks back. Let's look at the code. I wrote this code entirely by myself, so I would be comfortable putting it in component C, personalized project reference, as long as it met the project criteria. However, I didn't create the images of the gorilla, so I need to cite that. Let's look at the images. It's just frames of animation. My code causes it to flip through the frames while moving the images along the x-axis so it appears to be walking. Let's take a look at the source. The gorilla picture was part of a 2D game art bundle. You'll probably find most of your art on web pages. In this case, I have the artist's name, so I will cite that too. We also need the URL. So I'm going to cut the web address here and go back to my code. 
When citing graphics, pictures, music, or sounds, usually there's not a good place to tie it directly to the code. I tend to put all that stuff at the bottom, and then it's out of the way. So I'm going to grab a comment. I'll start by saying citation, gorilla picture, so it's clear what asset I'm referring to. I know the name of the author, so I put it in. Finally, I paste in the web address. If I have more graphics, sounds, or music, I would also put them at the bottom. Finally, let's learn about citing datasets. Let's look at the program functionality that uses a dataset. I click the States button, and it gives me a list of all the states in the United States. Now let's look at the code. The Print States Procedure. Here is where we load the data from the table. I'll put the comment right above it. Let's go over to the Data tab. The table I imported is called US States, and I got it from code.org's data library. Let's look at the table. The table is called US States. The column I imported was called State Name. I type data imported from code.org data table, US States, column, State Name. If you got your data from somewhere else and input it yourself, you'll probably want to be a little more specific. If I wanted to use this procedure in component C, personalized project reference, that would be fine, but I would need to make sure to remove the citation comment when I put it in component C. I would leave the citation comment in component A, full program code. That sums up how you cite program code, graphics and sound resources, and data. To learn more about the plagiarism policy and when you need to cite resources, check out resource number four. Also, check out resource number seven for a full project walkthrough. See you soon.